Every time we boil eggs, somebody has to get out some milk, pour some on the countertop, and spin the egg through the milk. And the same phenomenon happens every time. A fluid moves up the sides and is flicked off at roughly the equator. And I started to watch it more carefully and realized I didn't understand why the fluid was moving up the sides. For most of us, this kind of mystery would have signaled dinner time. But Truscott launched an investigation. I built an apparatus that would allow me to sort of adjust the speed at which it spins, and then we can change the type of fluid that we immerse the sphere in. He also enlisted a sidekick. Ken Langley, graduate student at BYU in mechanical engineering. Yeah. And as they watched all these different things spin, they found that the mystery deepened. As you increase the speed, you get different effects. So if you go slow, you get fairly large globule-like droplets flying off the sides. And then as you speed it up a little bit more, you get these beautiful jets. I don't know, they sort of look like, you know, one of the nebula that you may look up at into the night sky or something. And then if you increase the speed even more, the most amazing thing I think was this, you can create a sheet. If you use something like glycerin in water, which is more viscous, you can create sheets that are several feet in, in diameter. What? Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy, but true. Here are the facts. When the sphere starts spinning, the fluid touching it starts moving too. Because of something called the no-slip condition, it's like friction. The same thing exists between a solid object and a fluid. It just can't slip past each other. And so this friction causes the fluid to travel with the object. Next, the liquid starts to rise. And this has to do with a speed difference. So if you're at the bottom of the sphere spinning, you don't have as fast of a velocity as if you're at the equator. And that's because the circumference of the egg or the sphere is bigger at the equator. So a particle of water up here is traveling a greater distance in one rotation than a particle down here. Greater distance in the same amount of time, faster speed. And then when you increase your velocity, that you decrease the pressure. It's the Bernoulli principle. So high pressure here and low pressure up here. This imbalance is what essentially draws fluid up the side. Case closed. Think again. Then, then I realized you've moved the fluid from one height to another. So it's this awesome pump that has no internal parts. Which could actually be useful. And with that stainless steel one, when we used 50% glycerin water mixture, we were able to get a flow rate of about four liters a minute. And yeah, there's a series of equations that my colleague Dan Maines and I have come up with that predict the rate at which it flows. So how good of a pump it is essentially is what that is. It seems that the case of the egg has been cracked. But as Ken Langley says, Sometimes we can get caught up in like the nitty gritty details, but overall it's just a beautiful thing that happens. The story you have just heard is true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. We didn't actually do that. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman. Mm-hmm.